now we are talking about uh, the service delivery the service delivery or in this case the managed uh, delivery of services um, is handled through a functional architecture uh, which is of course part of the ngn architecture but now it has some business oriented names uh, so uh, the three players which are the stakeholders in this uh, mds based business model that is user uh, uh, third party as service provider and engine operator exchange certain information that we call as profiles so what are profiles we are going to look at that and then we are going to look at the functions which use these pieces of information that we call profiles uh, to implement the service delivery smoothly and effectively so the mds basically uh, is essentially a new business model in which a uh, third party and ngn operator can collaborate coordinate exchange important information to realize better qos oriented service delivery which has its own guarantees to the user as well the third party and ngn implement this by exchanging certain critical information this information is uh, basically um coming from the important uh, live and registration related parameters of all the three players so we call them as profiles so we have the mds service profile uh, we have third party profiles we have the user profiles and we also have the ids of the important network elements and uh, servers which are going to be providing this mds so the service profile essentially is um, the service type the class of service uh, what kind of admission control treatment this service has to be offered like uh, it would it always be admissible uh, would it be admissible one time or when the bandwidth is available then the bandwidth information associated with this service type uh, for instance is it going to be permanent bandwidth assignment on demand bandwidth assignment or the bandwidth assignment is very flexible and it's a variable requirement then certain information on security for instance what are the uh, aaa related uh, functional requirements uh, to be met for this mds uh, then uh, the uh, port translation if it is using public and private ports uh, then certain additional privacy requirements in terms of encryption key exchange mechanism key sizes etc uh, there is another dimension to the service that is is this service a unicast service or if it if it is multicast or broadcast service then what are the parameters which should be addressed for realizing multicasting or broadcasting then we have third party profiles third party profiles are actually related to the identification mechanisms for the uh, third party service providers uh, they are recognized mainly on the basis of the domain name uh, the urls the ip addresses uh, Uh, since each service provider has its own a uh, set of servers known as server farm uh, so there is also a requirement to recognize these servers through their ip addresses and their status as well because at times these servers are going to be available and at times these servers are not going to be available so the overall capacity availability and reliability of the services coming from the third party are highly dependent on the current status of the servers then we have the individual user uh, which subscribes to the mds the user is recognized primarily through its uh, user id that is username password etc uh, now in the case of uh, mds uh, the user is recognized by its uh, by the user profile in mds uh, but in the case of uh, uh, ngn user has its own ngn identifier as well so the translation and mapping of uh, ngn profile to mds profile and backwards is essentially an important functionality that has to be implemented uh, so at registration time the user has a certain a uh, contract or initial understanding on the general aspects which are quite abstract at that time uh, on the service provisioning but when a user actually starts to use the service the user can actually select configure or tailor a service to that time to that user requirements which appear on the fly 
to the status of uh, the user if it is live or not and if a user is live what are the current uh, parameter settings that user has adopted have to be exchanged then we have the uh, control profile control profile actually means if you look at a service uh, that is a managed service now it requires something from ngn uh, this requirement from ngn actually is in the form of uh, certain control functions for instance service control session control the resource allocation de allocation the transport and delivery um, then the subscriber information has to be exchanged the number of subscribers because if the number of subscribers vary and if the number of subscribers go excessively um, huge that is there are so many subscribers in that case uh, the service can get compromised so this current log in logging information of the users is also very important to be exchanged uh, each user is again recognized by certain ids like login information the current port a user is using the service policy that user is um, subservient to or is currently based upon then there is another information which has to be uh, taken care of uh, and it has to be logged it has to be profiled that is the current network information the network state the network path which is being taken by this mds uh, the current topology with its options in case rerouting is required or some load balancing is required then what are the functional elements or the network nodes which are currently transporting the traffic uh, and what is the device or per link bandwidth which is available so we can actually look at the functional requirements uh, which emerge out of the mds and we can translate them into the functional support which is available in ngn we can start with the mds functions on the left hand side we have the service provider management that is the third party service coordination between the user third party and the ngn operator the session control that is a session and service control when to start a service when to end the service and terminal access that is the network attachment now all these are mappable to the ngn functions that is application support function service support function service control function and transport control function uh, now this is going to be essentially a recap because uh, we already have covered all these aspects in pretty much detail once we were covering the ngn architecture and the ip multimedia subsystem ims so the application support and service support essentially are used for identifying and authenticating third party it is implemented through the application to network interface so application to network interface provides the overall abstraction to uh, the third party and the ngn operator so this is a kind of interface that makes the two that is third party and this ngn operator two different and distinct network elements the application support function and service support functions are part of the overall service stratum uh, which are used for identification and authentication of the third party uh, the third party is verified authenticated through an interface that exists between the uh, uh, the uh, user equipment the user side customer premises equipment and the network side uh, so it is implemented through the application to network interface uh, while doing so some kind of service coordination is also realized because the service has to be provisioned uh, seamlessly in a very smooth manner that there is no disruption there is no competition and no conflict as such the service control function is essentially the control of the service um, in order to initialize a service to terminate a service uh, this is implemented uh, like ip multimedia subsystem the proxy interrogating and serving uh, call session control uh, functional entity if you recall we did this uh, few few modules away few modules back now the policy decisions which are to be implemented uh, under certain uh, uh, user contract uh, the path that the user can take uh, and the service uh, authentication and authorization all this are covered in the service control function so we are talking i'll recap we are talking about the 
managed delivery service. The, now, the managed delivery service has a lot of interaction between the third party and the engine operator. Now, the transport control function essentially deals with uh, the implementation uh, down to the uh, network elements in terms of the policies which are coming from the uh, service stratum. Uh, the resource allocation has to be ensured. Uh, the terminal or the user equipment has to be attached to the network so that the services can be delivered right down to the user equipment. Uh, then uh, location information for user access and whenever a user is moving, depending upon its current uh, uh, network uh, identifier, the user should be able to attach to the network by accessing it through certain configurations and parameter adjustment. Uh, 